Uh, right, good evening, everyone. Um, I'll be honest, mine's not anywhere near as flashy. Um, and it was something that I came up with in a, a couple of minutes. And Sophie's already hinted at a bit of it. Um, but I'm hoping you'll find it interesting of where I've managed to fit it into the curriculum um, anyway. Um, so I'll hold my hands up. I'm a little bit of a technophobe as it is. I don't particularly like enjoy using computers. I've actually got rid of all my social media. So I've put um, I've put my email address there. So if you want to have a chat or anything, uh, get to me there. I think the point of me being here is just to show that it's easy. Um, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Um, ask my year 13. They, um, they're always laughing at how I'm struggling to use even basic PowerPoint functions sometimes. Um, so uh, background. So I started in Keswick this time last year, um, moved over because it was a step up to head of department and mountains. Um, so you can often find me up mountains on mountain biking and all that kind of stuff. Um, since we started, I've had to do loads of curriculum development. I think it's fair to say when I started, um, there was a lot of work to do. So this is all part of that. Um, I'm lucky in that Digimap for School is actually paid for by the school. Um, my understanding is they used to give an old paper map uh, back in the day um, and have decided to just go for Digimap for School. So the whole school pays for it, which is excellent. So it doesn't come out of me. Um, but it also means that um, students are using it a bit widely around and we, we've put up the um, username in pretty much every form room just to try and get that message out there a little bit. I'll be honest, I'm try still trying to embed more use of GIS throughout my curriculum. So it's, it's an ongoing process, as you all know. Um, but the activity I'm talking about here is all about um, how do we investigate places. Now, where that came in, I started and I've heard that paper three was always the worst paper. So the skills paper was always the worst one. Um, and so I wanted to put some more field work skills and data presentation and all that kind of stuff. Added to that in the summer term, it's always really um, disrupted. So with our field work, we're often out, students go walk around the lake or walk around um, up Latrig or even Skiddo. Every year Greek has something to do as well as geography field work out and about and then there's a million other activities so what i wanted was kind of standalone lessons that were skills based um but um we could kind of maybe leave for a cover lesson or maybe um just do it standalone so it doesn't necessarily link one from another apart from their skills now it's all great because i was like oh yeah we can get outside lots of it we're in the Lake District, beautiful view, let's, let's go for it. So we're doing like environmental quality around the school, school microclimate, infiltration, ecology, all this kind of stuff. But what I hadn't considered at the time is how much it rains in the Lake District. So um, all these ideas of going out environmental quality, about half an hour before the lesson, it started absolutely hammering it down. And it wasn't even forecast. So I was like, I've got to do something quick. Um, so that's where this idea came from. So it was basically just using Digimaps to um, explore Keswick a bit more. So um, I'll flick over to my Digimaps. So um, there's Keswick and quite as Sophie said before, you can use your slider to go from historical map, so 1890s, and then today. And all I decided, I didn't want a lesson where students are just kind of figuring around with maps and playing. I, I, I wanted a bit more focus than that. Um, so all I got them to do is very simply go to 1890, get your measurement tool out on the left, click on area, and then just trace around the area of the settlement as it is. I'll just do this really roughly for now. Um, now... This obviously brought up loads of conversations of like, where's the edge of the, um, the settlement and things like that. And that was a good conversation to have and talked about how the accuracy of secondary data and all that kind of stuff, the kind of conversations I wanted anyway. Um, and then I switched it to today and then did exactly the same thing. And you can see even somewhere like Keswick, you can see us massively grown over time. So I've just put that into a table as I say, I'll do this really roughly now just to show you. Um, so I've got the, the two places there. 
Now, um, of course, you can think about presenting the data and um, actually drawing on the boxes and then measuring them and all that kind of stuff. But I just wanted something really quick and easy um, that the students could just get on with. Um, so from that, I literally just got them to fill in a table of six places, the 1890s area, the 2022 area, and what the difference is. Um, when they'd finished that, I also said, well, just try and find out any other changes. So one of my favourites was in Hall's Water. Um, let me just get that up. Um, so at Hall's Water, for example, um, there was a dam built. So um, we go back to 1890s and the reservoir was much, much, much smaller um, and then did the same for today and just traced it round. Um, so, oops, let me just get rid of that. Um, Alex, so, could I just ask, I'm so sorry yeah. to interrupt. Someone's asking, is this uh, primary or secondary pupils that were doing this exercise? So this was based at Key Stage 3, so this was Year 7. Um, but there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do it for any level. Um, as I say, I've, I've designed it to be simple so I can use it, so any students can use it. So it's simple by design. I think this would work equally well, if not better, at Key Stage 2. Um, and it's, I suppose it's just this playing with um, your historical maps, like Sophie was saying, playing with measurement tools and just using it to get to know a place, whether that's the physical geography, like rivers, changes, or dam, building a dam, or whether it's the human changes of cities, um, whatever works for you, really. Um, so I've done another one where we've just measured, zoomed in, measured the width of a river up in the upper course, then measured the width of the river in the uh, lower course, and then looked at the differences there. You could do it for coastal erosion changes, um, whatever really works. And uh, for our GCSE, we study Manchester. So again, you can look, use it to look at the growth of Manchester. Um, I suppose it's, the choice is yours, really. Um, and yeah, you, obviously you can take it a step forward and present the data and all this kind of stuff. But I just wanted a standalone one lesson that we got something straight out of. Um, and that's it, really. That was it for me. I said it was short and simple. <laughs>